Good afternoon, welcome back to the workbench. Today I'm doing something a little bit different here. I've got a guitar which, as you can probably tell, is uh, not in full working order. In fact, the head is broken off. Um, broken off pretty badly, in fact. Um, although this has not happened recently, this apparently was uh, damage caused uh, a few years ago. This is a friend of mine's uh, guitar here. Um, apparently it was uh, broken in an accident and my friend did glue the uh, guitar back together, um, she said. Uh, you can see sort of where there's maybe some old glue sort of residue around here. Um, I've just been trying to clean this up a little bit. Um, so it, yeah, she said it worked fine for uh, a couple of years, or a few years, I don't know exactly. Um, but uh, just recently the uh, head just, well, just fell off again. Basically the glue just, um, I don't know, gave up or something. Um, so asked me if I could have a look and see if I could do uh, do some do some work on it. So I thought, yeah, why not? I mean, it shouldn't be too hard. Um, obviously, <laughs> I won't be doing this in a you know proper professional way. This is going to be purely functional. Um, so anyone who's uh, who's into uh, guitar restoration or anything like that, um, you probably want to look away now um, <laughs> because this is not going to be uh, not going to be pretty. I expect. Um, well, that said, I mean the original repair. Is all already not you know not uh, perfect or anything um, you know there's glue residue here and stuff like that but yeah I mean so as long as it's functional that's just basically the, the point um, get it so that it is usable and uh, that's all that really matters um, but I won't try and make a mess of it or anything deliberately obviously but I'll uh, you know I'll try and do it as carefully as I can and make sure it looks as good as I can get it but I'm not gonna you know, sand this all down and repaint it or anything, or do anything like that. Um, which I mean, obviously you would if you were doing it properly, but, you know, I just just want to do a functional repair. So, um, I just have started by uh, trying to scrape the old glue off. I've got a wire brush here, and um, I've just been scraping away at this um, to try and get the old glue residue off, because it sort of, uh, you know, gets in the way of, of um, joining everything back together again. Um, sort of leaves a rough surface that doesn't fully go back together smoothly and also of course putting fresh glue on old glue that's already um, you know come off already broken it's sort of you know you're kind of gluing you're gluing fresh glue onto something that's not particularly structurally sound you want to you know glue directly to the wood if you can so I want to try and scrape off as much of this old glue as possible clean it up get back to the wood there and then do some fresh glue and then also might um, might put some screws uh, through the front, through here, um, to sort of hold it together as well. Get maybe some black black screws, countersink them. You know, it'll, yeah, like I said, won't look amazing, I guess, but it'll work, um, which is the entire purpose of it, and obviously much cheaper than buying a whole new guitar or taking it to a professional that would do it, um, do a much better job. But yeah, this uh, hopefully should just functionally work, so that's basically it. I'll just, uh, Scraping all this off and going ahead with it. So, I mean, taking care, you know, not to scrape the paint that's already on here. Just want to clean this, uh, clean up this old glue on this area, and then I'll do the same over here. But uh, yeah, we'll see how, see what happens. Um, guess I'm not really going to show much in this video, I mean there's not really much to say, it's just scraping some glue off. Um, but yeah, I might try to use the JB Weld that I used before, um, should be quite good, maybe, or, or Arrow Diet, I'm not sure. As far as I can tell both should work good. I do like the idea of uh, the JB Weld because it is grey and um, you know, with this glue here, as a previous one, it was sort of white or clear colour, so you got kind of residue around the edges that looks um, sort of white and doesn't look as good. And also this this part here where it's cracked, chipped off, that's just blank. I feel I can um, fill that in maybe with some of the other stuff, get it uh, looking a bit better, at least a darker colour, you know, rather than just the bare wood showing through. So even if it's not painted, at least the colour will match more than than what it has already. Um, but yeah, I mean there's still a bunch of glue residue on here. You can probably see, you know, around this part here. So, I mean, like I said, I'm not going to do anything about that. I'm just going to leave it. Um, 
and we got the uh, the back here, this uh, neck there. So you can see probably the uh, you know all this glue residue, the sort of white color stuff. Um, so yeah, it's got to scrape all that off basically, and um, like I said, get back to the fresh wood. That's that's the idea. Um, otherwise, you're just sort of putting glue on. You're trying to glue on something that's not not good. So actually, I'll leave this upside down there so I can actually get at it. But you can see the difference. This one I've already been scraping, and you can see, you know, wire brushing. You can see there's uh, much less residue there. So you know that. And obviously, um, once you uh, do that, you're going to end up with a whole lot of glue dust and wood dust and stuff in there. So you want to brush that off with another another brush there. Get rid of that. So otherwise, again, you're just you're putting glue on something that's not even part of the part of the thing you're gluing. It's just loose dust. You don't want to glue to to loose dust. It's just going to make things worse. So make sure to clean that all up like that. Um, afterwards, but yeah, I don't want to, you know, take off too much or anything, or sand it smooth or anything like that, because I do want to get the uh, these pieces to match up as much as possible, um, without sort of, you know, ending up with some sort of gap that you have to f try and fill in or anything. I want to just make it so they they fit together like a jigsaw puzzle, and just need a little bit of glue in there and. And all that, but like I said, I probably maybe get some screws and put them through the through this, and to just give it a bit more rigidity, more strength. Um, not that I necessarily need it, but I just thought that may be a good idea. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Basically, go ahead and scrape this, uh, scrape this glue off. <laughs> and again, just trying to keep away from this varnish that's here. I don't want to, I don't want to make this get all scratched up or anything. I want to make sure I only do this part here. So, in fact, when it comes to this edge, I'll probably just do a, maybe just scrape with a, uh, something else, like a knife or something, just around this bit, so I can get a. Get it, add it more carefully, but for the main part, I'll use the brush. I don't know what the uh, type of glue was, and my friend said she couldn't remember or anything, so um, makes sense, you know, years and years ago. Why, why would you remember something like that anyway? Um, but yeah, I just want to, you know, obviously some glues might be incompatible, so I don't know what type it was either. I can't tell by looking at it. Um, so I'll just, yeah try and get rid of much of it as possible and hopefully it'll work <laughs> um, so yeah I'll probably just cut this won't show me scraping off glue for half an hour it's a bit boring so yeah we'll probably just uh, I'll come back when it's uh, ready and I'll put the glue in and we'll uh, see what happens alright so I've uh, used this brush on both of these surfaces and got rid of all the loose glue and everything looks pretty clean and there's no dust, I've brushed that off and obviously there's the stuff over there so now I'm going to put some of this on it and uh, use this, I do see there is a, a wood weld version of this but it uh, seems to be the exact same thing just with a brown colour instead of grey so and like I said the grey will match the uh, the paint on this a little bit better anyway so it doesn't really matter um, and you can paint over the top of it if it uh, doesn't look that good, but yeah, I'm just going to go with this because it should work. Um, so we just need something to stir that with. Guess I'll just get another one of those uh, one of those cotton buds. Um, so I guess I'll need a bit more of this than usual. And then mix it together. <laughs> Try not to mind the smell too much. This stuff does smell a bit weird. Most glue does, I guess. This one isn't particularly amazing. I wonder if 
I should use some kind of brush for this to put this on. Um, I may have some spare brushes somewhere. Obviously this is only going to work once, but hey. goes on like that and then I need to clamp this down to make sure it actually fits. <laughs> Take two because I left an old credit card lying in the background and didn't realize it. Um, <laughs> anyway and now there's an ant on my clamp. Hmm always good to have ants on your clamp maybe I don't know. Anyway um, as you can see I've done some bit of a <laughs> jiggery pokery with this um, or whatever you want to call it. Um, I tied it up with, uh, well, tied it up with rope. Um, trying to clamp this down, I had encountered a problem where when I when I screwed these clamps down, the uh, the head slid off the front. Well, it didn't slide right off or anything, but it started to slide forward because this this brake here is obviously on an angle and it just just pushed it sort of downhill. Um, so yeah, that didn't really work. So I uh, got this rope here and tied it round and um, tensioned it with these cable tie here well, twist tie things, um, and yeah, it sort of pushes it, pulls it back together, and uh, puts force pulling this way, and the clamps are going down, and yeah, so this seems to work, it sort of held everything in place. Um, I guess maybe you could also use like a floor clamp, um, for doing floorboards, that kind of thing, a big long sort of furniture clamp. Um, I do have one somewhere, but uh, I didn't really feel like trying to grab it, and this rope was much uh, closer to hand, so I just used that instead. Um, yeah, and also probably easier because it's uh, soft, it's not going to damage anything. So yeah, that seems to be fine. Um, so yeah, I guess I just got to wait 24 hours now and uh, hope that it works. Um, you can see the giant pile of used uh, cotton buds there that I used to wipe off the excess um, epoxy that squeezed out the crack there. Um, and yeah, Probably not the most efficient way of doing it, but hey, it seemed to work. Anyway, I um, also found that I can clean the uh, brush as well, which was quite a nice surprise. I didn't really um, think that would be possible. I thought I might just have to chuck this away. I mean, it's obviously, you know, pretty cheap, but hey, if you can re re reuse something, why not? Well, turns out, as long as the epoxy is still wet, I guess, um, 
hot soapy water, or maybe even cold soapy water, but I just used hot soapy water and it just cleaned it all right off. Came straight off my fingers as well, so, you know, no problem there. Um, yeah, so uh, there you go. I guess that's why they tell you to degrease stuff before you try and put epoxy on it, because it just won't stick to grease or soap or anything like that, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I've got these little bits of tape underneath the uh, the clamp, uh, well, clamp thingies, whatever they are, um, <laughs> to avoid, hopefully avoid any sort of pressure marks in the wood by screwing these down. Um, these clamps are not the best ones. They do have a kind of a funny sort of thing on it, um, sort of a ridge in that, so it can leave marks if you do it too tight directly on wood, um, but yeah, hopefully uh, this tape here will, will avoid that problem, um, but yeah, there we go, that's not much else to say, I guess I've just got to wait 24 hours and uh, hope this works, um, the instructions say 15 to 24 hours, but I figured I'll go with uh, 24 because, you know, why not? to so make sure. Um, and as for screwing this down, maybe I will. Um, I think I said maybe drill some, some holes in the front there and uh, add some screws just to give it some extra strength. I don't know if that'll be necessary or not. Um, I don't know what the previous glue was that was used. Uh, my friend said it did last for several years so um, you know I guess this, is, this uh, epoxy may probably be better glue so it should work fine um, but yeah I don't know maybe the idea of putting some screws in might not be a bad idea just to give it some extra strength because um, you know you got uh, six sort of tight steel strings on this thing it's gonna give a well I don't know how much force it's gonna put on it but it's probably gonna be a decent amount um, over time it may make all those problems I don't know but yeah, anyway, I might add some screws. I mean, the front of this, um, like I showed before, it's all sort of cracked and there's issues. I, I filled in the uh, the sort of the bare parts that I could with some of the epoxy, so it looks a bit better than than maybe it would have if I didn't. But, um, yeah, it's still pretty kind of rough on the front there with old glue residue from before and cracks and stuff. So, I mean, I guess the addition of a few screws wouldn't really um, make it look too bad, to be honest. Um, especially if they're black, they'll match in with the paint anyway, so maybe I'll do that. I don't know, we'll see what happens. It all, it all depends if I can actually find it in the right length, to be honest. Um, this, uh, you know, this this thing is about, I don't know, 15 millimeters thick, I think, about here, so got to get some sort of short screws. They've got to be long enough to actually go through both sides of the crack, crack part, and also short enough that they don't stick out the other end, so yeah, I don't know, might, might be don't know if that's going to be possible or not, but if I can get some, I might put some in. But yeah, there we go, that's the thing. So 24 hours later, let's see what happens. Alright, so it's uh, 24 hours later, approximately. Maybe 23 and a half, I don't know. But uh, definitely the uh, recommended cure time for the stuff. So time to uh, start taking all this apart, I guess, and see if it's uh, worked. I'm pretty sure it would have worked, but uh, yeah. Has it worked well? That's the question, I guess. So, yeah. Um, we shall see. I don't know. Interesting question. Let's take these off. Um, I have noticed that there's a bit of glue, epoxy, that is squeezed out around the edge of the crack. Um, must have sort of seeped out over time. Uh, after I did the last bit, but it's not too much. Doesn't look too bad or anything, so it's uh, hopefully not a big deal. Anyway, let's take all this off. <laughs> um. Alright, so let's get this rope out of the way. Hmm. 
That actually worked pretty well, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, anyway. And, uh, now we've got to get these clamps off. Um. So. Let's hope that that has not left any marks in the wood. Is there anything I'd be really worried about? Like I said, I put tape over it, so should be okay. That looks alright. I can't really see anything there on that one. Maybe a little bit of a dent there, but it's not too bad. Um, let's see. Hmm. Oh well. Unfortunately there is a slight dent there. You can maybe see from that clamp, but I mean, compared to all this, it's uh, <laughs> it's hardly a thing. It's the, the problem with the design of this particular clamp. It's got this silly sort of thing in the middle. It's not a very good design, at, anyway. But yeah, I suppose I can get some better ones, but hey, it seems to have worked, though. So, it's, uh, so that's so what does the other side look like? So if I can get this turned around, so you can actually see the rest of it. Um, how does that look like? That looks pretty good. Um, hmm. I'll bring it around the other side, I think. There we go. So, not too bad. I mean, this glue residue here is from the previous previous thing there, and I just filled in this hole where the wood must have broken off with uh, some more of the JB Weld, so we got this bit here um, and this bit there all seems pretty good, I mean you could paint that over with black if you wanted to and it would probably look not too bad at all um, I mean it's not uh, it's not sort of flush, but there were these bits on here where there was already a piece glued sort of on top there that was sticking out, so can't really do much about that, but the rest of it looks uh, looks quite nice. It seems to be in the right position. The lines are okay. I mean, you could probably sand that, sand that down if you really wanted and get it kind of flat and repaint it. It wouldn't look too bad, but I think the uh, the grey is not too bad with the black. I think it looks arguably a bit better than just having bare wood um, with broken with a hole, but I don't know, that's just me. Anyway, that's right, I guess. As long as it works. I did get these screws here. Um, these were the shortest ones I could get in this black colour. Um, which I thought I could put maybe three of them in a row or something along there. Um, just to get some better better fixing of this, although I'm not entirely sure though. Um, if there is enough wood there, I don't know what the actual thickness of this is. Maybe uh, maybe too thin. I'm not sure. Um, at this point, it's well. Can see that, but it's uh, 17 millimeters approximately here, so could work. I guess these are these are 16. It's pretty close, though. I would have preferred maybe a, a 12 or or something 12 millimeter, but they didn't have any. That was the shortest ones. You can get uh, other colors, of course, but I thought black would be better. So I may uh, try that, may not. It does get thicker down this end. Um, I think. Yeah. It's more like 18. It gets a little bit thicker, not by much though, so... I don't know. Whether it's necessary. I mean, I think the actual glue itself has probably worked... Um, pretty well in... Putting in screws is probably not actually necessary at all. Um, 
but who knows it may uh may help I'll think about it anyway it's pretty late at night now so um I might not do that right now I may do that later I'll just think about it um because I really wouldn't want to have the uh the point sticking out the back that would just be terrible I suppose you could um you could file the end off or something I suppose or file it shorter um file a couple of millimeters off could work oh, I'll think about it anyway we'll see if I do that the other question of course is to get the actual screw straight because the idea with this is you know countersunk heads you can countersink these in and it won't look too bad or anything but um, obviously if you drill on the wrong angle then the, the countersink um, countersunk heads won't go in the in the countersinking hole properly and it will look a bit horrible so you really need to get that definitely drilling perpendicular straight down there so um question is could I actually do that set up some sort of way of putting this in a in a drill press and actually getting the uh, getting the thing to go in straight because um, the idea would be to have that flush it would look uh, look much much better than if it was sticking out or something um, but yeah we'll see we'll see I might do that if I can figure out how to do it I'll uh, maybe do it just to give some added strength, but probably, I mean, this JB Weld stuff is pretty good, so may not be necessary. Anyway, hard to tell, I guess, uh, without testing it and um, seeing if it breaks or not, I suppose. I mean, that's the kind of thing, it's sort of like, I, I'm pretty confident that this would work just fine. Um, but on the other hand, I'm um, kind of, I don't want to, I don't want to put the strings back in, tighten them all up and then have it all snap off. Um, which would be kind of sad and annoying and possibly uh, harder to fix so who knows alright this is my attempt at drilling Okay, so that's uh, in the middle there. So this uh, drill bit is not long enough to go all the way. It's a PCB drill bit, tungsten carbide, so it makes a good clean hole, but it's not going to be deep enough. It only goes about 10 millimeters, I think, or 11 or something. Um, so I'm going to finish off afterwards with one of these and uh, just set that to the exact depth so that I don't go too deep um, but there we go so I've just got this uh, the guitar body sitting on my chair um, and I actually just adjusted the chair height to be at the exact height so that this lays flat on the uh, on the drill table here and uh, gets a perfect, uh, perfect drill hole, as far as I can tell. Let's check to make sure that's actually on the mark. I've done. Yep. Looks good. Alright, so, we've got three holes there, as you can see, so now I've just got to uh, get them the right length, uh, 16 millimeters, or maybe I'll go 15, because the screw has a little point on it at the end, which doesn't really matter, so I'll go maybe 15 millimeters down with this other drill bit, and then we'll, uh, just got to measure that correctly. 
And then I just have to countersink the top and make sure the screws go in. Well, annoyingly it looks like I can't set the depth as shallow as I want because the drill bit's too long to fit in the chuck. But that actually might be a good thing. I can do this by hand, um, which is probably safer anyway. So yeah, I'll finish it off by hand and we'll um, do that. So the uh, trick to that is to measure the distance you want. In this case, 15 millimeters. I probably actually won't use this drill bit, I'll use a different one. But the uh, trick is to get that, set the uh, length you want, and then you get like a little piece of tape, piece of masking tape or something. Um, and you just tie that, and basically wrap it around the drill bit at the exact point that you want. Which in this case is there. Basically. And then stick that in your drill and when you get to the uh, when you drill down, you just drill until that point there. So you can see that goes in, but doesn't go far enough. So stick that in, go a little further, and uh, you get to that point there. But yeah, I'll uh, probably use a drill bit from uh, this other set here anyway. Actually, a 2.5, yeah, because this goes. I can stick this straight in the screwdriver handle and just do it by hand, you see, very slowly so it uh, avoids any issue of potentially going too far and going out the other side because if I drill this to, these, these screws are 16mm this is 18mm thick, this wood at this point, so you know, I can only go, I've only got 2mm to play with if I go a little bit too far then I will uh, have a hole right through the side which will look a bit a bit terrible so we don't want to do that so again I'll try this because I'm using this uh, other one because it has the hex drive thing that you use for the actual bits much easier to fit in there but again we have this 15, I'll say. Just have to get that at the appropriate point. Which is basically there. So there we go. Just measure that. It's actually 15.3, which is fine. Like I said, we want 16 anyway. And then I can just grab this little drill chuck thing. Stick that there. Actually, I need something to put this on. Make it a bit flatter. There we go. And then, my hand, just drill down until that goes there. <laughs> Looks fine. No issue. There we go. This wood is pretty soft, which is why I kind of wonder if just doing glue is a good idea and why why I wanted to do the uh, the screws as well because I think it will make it um, a bit better 
So now I got that. Um, I just need to countersink them. So I've got a countersink bit here, as you can see. Which again, I can just pop straight in this little screwdriver thing, and we can see we have to go down about two millimeters, two and a half millimeters, I think, to get the head for that. So I just want to do that very carefully. Make sure you don't overdo it. I mean, it's not going to matter if you go in too deep, but then you'll get a ring of bare wood around the outside, obviously, of the hole around the screw head, and it will look a bit silly. Whereas, and of course, if you don't do it enough, then this thing will not sit flush with the wood, and it will also look silly. And I'm just going to take that pencil line off that I just put on there. So yeah, we just want to take that down just a little bit. That's why I'm doing this by hand. You wouldn't want to do this with power tools because it may end up not looking very good. Easy, too easy to overdo it, and then you can just keep checking with the screw head. Make sure you got the actual right size there. Go nice and slow. Try doing that straight as well, because you uh don't want to get a lopsided hole that um, is larger on one side than the other and then again you have the same problem with the screw head sort of leaving a ring around it I think that's pretty much good um, yeah I'd say so I mean, you can I guess measure the screw head as well it's uh, 6.5 millimeters. it looks like. You can measure this. It's uh, a little bit under that, but that might be just fine. Anyway, there we go. I think that's pretty much perfect. And then obviously it's a case of uh, screwing it in with the appropriate bit and if all goes well it should look very good oops, so there we go I can do that do that for the other two there. It's actually uh, very soft wood. Mm. Because this wood is so soft, I just wonder, you know, if the glue is much stronger than the wood, it will probably cause the issue where the, uh, you know, I wonder if the actual wood would break before the glue, so the wood would. <laughs> Anyway, that looks pretty good. It's not perfectly flush, but to be honest, you know, compared to all this glue and everything, it's not too bad. And obviously, we uh, don't have anything sticking out the other side, which is good. And we got screws that go right there, just right at that end point there. So it's kind of where the maximum sort of pulling force would go in, in that direction. Um, against the tension of the springs, strings pulling down this way. 
So I think this is a good location for the screws and that should uh, work pretty well. So now it's just the task of putting the strings back in and uh, tuning it up and making sure everything works. Well, I just tried to put the uh, strings back on and just doing the first one here and it's uh, snapped when I tried to tighten it up which kind of makes sense because I think the uh, the metal has just got metal fatigue from being wound up very tight and then being loosened off and then trying to be tightened up again so the thicker strings may be fine but this uh, this one here has not worked at all so yeah it's uh, worth noting probably obvious to anyone who's an expert in this but not to me I didn't think of that but there you go um, that's obviously that so yeah getting these back on I don't know how easy that is uh, I mean trying to unwind these um, may cause metal fatigue again and, and just cause the same problems because obviously this this bend here and the string at the bottom there has occurred when the string is taut and under tension and so this uh, to try and get this on here at the same point is impossible um, because I'd have to pull it as pull it as tight with my hand as, as it would have been when it was done up with the screw and of course that's going to be impossible to do um, so then it becomes the task of having to fit it on at a different angle and so it's going to get bent back and probably snap just like the previous one so I don't know if it's going to be possible it may unfortunately it may be the case that this may need uh, a whole lot of new strings um, or at the very least these uh, thin ones may need to be replaced the thick ones might be usable but yeah I don't know that's a good point I didn't think of that and uh, I don't know if my friend did either to be honest so hmm I might have to uh, not do that right now I'll have to do that with it later but we can have a look at the uh, the work that I've done so far and just have a look and see how it turned out so there we go we got uh, the glue here which is all uh, nicely done and we got the uh, three screws that I just put in there which uh, seem to work quite well too and you can see this uh, so there you can see you know there's a little bit of glue there but oh well and um, yeah I, like I said not going to be the prettiest thing in the world but it should be functional although it's a pity about the strings that uh, may be an issue but hey there we go I guess uh, something to note out for so I might continue this video um, once that's all done I'm not sure maybe in a, a while before I get that a couple of days maybe um, but yeah I mean that's for that I think the uh, actual repair is uh, pretty good JB Weld is not a bad product or anything and yeah I think uh, this looks kind of interesting it looks sort of uh, like a post-apocalyptic guitar now <laughs> so yeah sort of has its own sort of kind of charm to it in a way may not look perfect but it certainly looks interesting so yeah it's a pretty shame I can't maybe reuse the sort of old patinaed strings it gives a gives a good look to it but yeah might as well get new strings but hey that's that that seems to have worked so excellent it's a, a nice repair so can you use JB Weld to fix a guitar it would appear so um, can you reuse steel strings on a, on a guitar it appear possibly not but we will find out later I guess um, but yeah that might be it for this one if there's an update there will be one coming and if not well then this might be it and maybe see you next time Maybe not. We'll find out after this. Or maybe not. Anything?